welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. And today I have a tutorial on this beautiful cottage core ruffle dress. You already saw it in the intro, so I don't need to show it off too much to you guys, but I will be giving you guys a very in-depth tutorial today on how to sew this. If you want to learn how I draped, patterned, prototyped this dress, that's all in part one. So I will link that on the top of the screen and down below for you guys. Or if you are just purchasing the pattern and want to learn how to sew it, that's what this video is. And if you would like the pattern to this dress, that is the first link down below. You can find it in my Etsy. And for those of you guys who are subscribed already, you know I like to give you guys a discount code. So you can use the code COTTAGECORE to get 30% off this pattern until tomorrow at midnight Eastern time. All the supplies and materials you're gonna need to create this project are also in that first link down below. It's in the pattern listing description and all of the the equipment that I use throughout the video is linked in this video description. I do want to let you guys know this is more of an advanced pattern. I've labeled it as advanced on my Etsy. I want to point out to you guys where the difficulties may arise. So right here at the center front where the skirt meets the bodice, it's kind of in a pointed waistline. That's a little bit challenging. This bust seam that goes straight through the bust is also kind of a challenging seam. And then if you decide to do a lining, that can also be a challenging thing. I wouldn't say it's impossible. If you're a stronger intermediate sewer or you are an intermediate sewer and you wanna take your time on this, I would say it's definitely doable, but I just wanna point those things out there. If you're like, dang, I am a beginner, I probably cannot make this dress, I would still recommend that you guys watch this video because even if you're not going to create it, I'm going to walk you through every single step and give you techniques that you might not know how to do already. Okay, and then one more thing, this dress is fully lined. I decided to create a skirt lining since my dress fabric is see-through and the pattern includes that, but if you don't wanna create a fully lined dress because it's a little bit more fabric, a little bit more time, you don't have to do that. You could do a fully lined bodice or you could just line the bust area. So different options for you depending on what you wanna do. But I think that's everything, so let's just get into the tutorial. All right, so first, of course, print out your pattern. And when you are printing, make sure you print at 100% scale. I like to print on cardstock and use packing tape just so my pattern is a little bit more durable and it lasts a little bit longer. Make sure you refer to your instruction pamphlet to figure out what size you are and what size to cut out. Once you do that, you can cut on the respective line. Do this to all of your pattern pieces, and then you are ready to cut out your fashion fabric. Make sure you're paying attention to the pattern marking, so make sure you're notching where it says to notch, you're cutting on the fold where it says to cut on the fold, and make sure you cut out your shell and your lining. Now we're gonna start sewing. So I have the front side of my bodice on the right, the back side of my bodice on the left, but we are going to start sewing with the front side of the bodice. So first, I'm going to sew up the princess seams along the waist. I'm gonna sew and then serge it or finish it however you would like, and do make sure you press it really good. Next, we're gonna sew the darts at the lower bust. If you already know how to sew darts, you can skip through this part, but for those of you who have some trouble, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to sew some darts. So first, I just mark it out with some tracing paper. You should have already marked it when you cut out your pattern. And I'm just going to fold the dart in half and pin it along the dart legs. When I sew, I'm gonna sew up very, very close to the dart point, but when I get to the point, I'm not going to backstitch or sew off the fabric. Instead, I'm going to leave a really long tail of thread at the end and clip it. And to keep the thread from unraveling, I'm going to take the thread and tie it in a double knot, and this just keeps the point of the dart from getting too bulky. Now we're gonna sew the upper bust to the lower bust, and this is probably the most challenging seam of the dress, so just make sure you go super slow. It's challenging because you are sewing reverse curves, so as you can see, it doesn't line up nicely. So what I like to do to make this a little bit easier is make clips into the inside curves of this seam. So wherever this inside curve, I'm just going to clip in about a quarter of an inch. This is going to make it a lot easier when you're actually sewing it, but make sure you don't clip in too much. I just like to do a quarter inch. Once you've clipped it in, you can place the upper bust and lower bust together right sides together and then just pin along that seam line. Take your time pinning this. Because the seam has multiple reverse curves, the raw edges are not going to match up exactly, but the stitch line measurement of that seam is. So you're gonna kinda have to ease those pieces together. I just want you guys to kind of watch me pin everything together and start sewing. And then I'm gonna come back when I start sewing so I can explain a little bit more in depth what I'm doing. So 
So when I get to a super curved part of the seam, I'm going to have to go extremely, extremely slowly. As you can see here, the fabric does not lay flat on top of each other. Every few stitches, I'm kind of adjusting the fabric just so I'm sure that I'm not catching fabric where I'm not supposed to. So again, the key to the seam is just to go super, super slowly. Um, if you are struggling with it, then maybe try a couple of times or do a prototype for this seam. But yes, it's definitely challenging, so just go slow. After that, I just finished the seam with a serger and then I press that seam upwards. Next, we're going to sew the front bust to the rest of the front bodice. Make sure you are matching up the darts of the bust with the princess seams of the rest of the bodice. And here is Hotch. This is a little Hotch break. How cute is he, my little baby? Okay, now back to sewing. So after I pin those pieces together, I'm just going to sew, serge, and then of course, press that seam. Now we can move on to the back bodice. So I'm gonna sew the princess seams of the waist area, and then I'm gonna sew the upper back to the rest of the back bodice. Now we're gonna sew the front and back bodices together. So place those pieces right sides together and sew along one of the side seams. Choose whatever side seam you want the zipper on and sew on the opposite side. So I'm gonna have the zipper on the right, so I'm sewing on the left side seam. Just remember what side you want that zipper to be on and keep that in mind for the rest of the garment. After that, we are going to repeat the entire process of sewing the front bodice and the back bodice with the lining. Now we're going to sew the side seam of the lining. So whatever side seam we sewed for the shell, you are going to sew the opposite side seam for the lining. So you can see here, I'm just giving you a visual aid on how to figure out what the opposite side seam is. So if they're both facing right side up, you want the front bodice to be on opposite sides. Now working on the shell, it's time to sew the side seam of the skirt. So make sure you're sewing that same side seam of the skirt that you sewed for the bodice. I am sewing the left side seam. And make sure you are serging and pressing all of these seams as well. After that, we are going to create the gathers for the skirt. So you're going to sew two rows of basting stitches in the seam allowance at the waistline of the skirt. And I'm going to sew two rows of basting stitches starting and stopping at each of the points of the skirt. So at the center front, I'm going to stop my basting stitches. Then I'm gonna sew from the center front all the way to the center back. And then I'm going to sew from the center back to the edge of the waistline again. We're gonna do this because we don't really wanna sew some basting stitches around the corners because it's gonna be really hard to pull the threads and create those gathers if you do that. So right here you can see me, I'm just sewing two rows of basting stitches within the seam allowance. Now that we've sewn all our basting stitches, we are going to gather the skirt. So we are going to gather the skirt to fit into that area of the bodice. So I'm just going to tug on the two bobbin threads to create the gathers, gathering it up until it fits into that area. You wanna make sure that the gathers are nice and even and it's not too gathered in one spot and not at all in another. And then after that, I'm just going to tie all of the threads to make sure that the gathers stay in place. Now we can pin the skirt to the bodice at the waistline and then sew it. I'm actually just going to pin one section at a time and sew one section at a time just because these are reverse corners and it's a little bit challenging to have everything pinned down at once. So I'm going to pin and sew that first section from the side of the dress to the center front point, then going from the center front point to the center back point, and then the center back point to the side again, just like we did with the basting stitches. Next, I'm going to serge and then press that seam. And a little tip for you guys when pressing the seam, try not to crush the ruffles with your iron. Just take the tip of your iron and press that seam right in the center of it. You can also use a mini iron if you have one. Now I'm gonna work on the skirt lining, sewing that at the side seam. Make sure you are sewing it at the correct side seam. A little trick I like to do is to place the bodice on top of the skirt to make sure that you are sewing on the correct side. Once you do that, we're again going to pin the skirt to the bodice at the waistline and sew along that waistline. For this, we don't need to sew any ruffles because it's just the lining and it should line up precisely. I will say that this seam on the lining is a little harder than this seam on the shell just because the gathers kind of hide any little mistakes you might make. My best advice is to take it slow and section by section and if you need to clip into any of the corners while sewing, you can do that. And don't forget to finish the seam by either serging it or another method and then make sure you press it nice and good. Now we're going to prep for the invisible zipper by serging the sides 
of the shell and the lining individually. So we're gonna serge, and this is just gonna finish that seam preemptively for the invisible zipper. Now we're going to insert the invisible zipper in the side seam of the shell. If you know how to do this, go ahead and just do it. I'm gonna give you some extra tips. So what I like to do is baste one side of the zipper in first. I'm not worried about sewing it too close to the zipper teeth. I'm just basting it in. After that, I'm going to zip up the zipper and just mark with pins at the waistline and where the zipper stops so that I can make sure I line the zipper up correctly on the other side. Then I'm just going to baste that down again. And after I do that, I'm going to zip the zipper up again to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. So check all of those seams, make sure they're matching. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and sew the zipper with either a zipper foot like me or an invisible zipper foot to finalize that. Now we're gonna move on to the straps. So you should have four straps. So we're gonna go one at a time, take one, fold it right sides together and sew along the long edge and the short edge that is flat. Do not sew along the short edge that is slanted. Then just turn it right side out. I'm using a loop turner, but you can also use a safety pin and then just press it really well with your iron. Now we're going to attach the slanted side of the straps to the dress. To help myself figure out which way it gets attached, I like to line it up with the dress as if it were fully sewn. So for the front of the dress, the longer edge is going to be towards the outside. And so I'm just going to flip that over and pin the strap to the dress right sides together. I'm gonna to do it for the other side as well. And then your two front straps should cross in the center. Now for the back straps, it should be the opposite. So the longer slanted edge should be towards the center and your two back straps are going to be pinned outwards from the dress. You could stay stitch those in place or you could just move on like me and place the lining on top of the shell and pin along the entire neckline. Once you pin the neckline, you can go ahead and sew the entire neckline. Now it's time to attach the lining to the shell where the zipper is. So the lining and the shell should be right sides together with the zipper sandwiched in between. You're just gonna sew about a quarter inch into that seam to attach the lining. You don't need to go all the way up to the zipper teeth. Your zipper should be completely unzipped for this and you'll only be able to sew down to where you hit the zipper slider. So to sew the rest of that seam closed, just place the lining pieces right sides together and then sew with half inch seam allowance all the way up to again where that zipper slider and stop is. Now it's time to hem. So we want to hem the shell and the lining completely separately. So I'm going to show you all the steps for the shell, but you're going to repeat them on the lining. Step one is to fold up the hem one inch. We're going to create a rolled hem. So press it up one inch and then sew about one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Next, just trim that seam allowance really close to the stitch line. After that, you're going to bring it back to your iron and roll that hem up and then just press it down. After that, you can just stitch that hem down and that's gonna create a really nice thin rolled hem, perfect for a curved hemline. Also repeat that on the lighting. Now it's time to create our bow. So I'm going to take the two bow back pieces, place them right sides together and sew along one of the long edges, but I'm going to leave about a one inch gap in the center. This is going to allow us to turn our bow right side out later on. I'm also going to take the bow center piece and I'm just going to fold that in half right sides together and sew that as well. I'm now going to trim the bow tie and then just flip it right side out. Now I'm going to place the bow back on top of the bow front and then just sew completely around all four sides. Then you can clip the corners of the bow and turn that right side out. Now we just want to hand stitch the bow closed. You can use any stitch for this. It's going to be completely hidden. Just do a whip stitch, a ladder stitch, a blind stitch, whatever you like, it's gonna be hidden. I'm gonna take that bow tie and then just fold that completely around the bow to scrunch it up into a little bow shape. You can either hand stitch this or even stitch that with your machine. Once you create the bow, go ahead and place that on the dress where you like and then just hand stitch that in place. And then after that, you are completely done with your beautiful new cottage core dress.
All right, so that is how you make this cottagecore ruffly dress. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you learned a few things. Question of the day, if you were to make this dress or if you are going to make this dress, how do you envision making it? What fabrics would you use? What color would you do it in? Let me know. And if you do end up recreating this dress, definitely send it to me over Instagram DMs or if you post a picture of it, for sure tag me in it because I'm very likely to repost you to my story. Don't forget that the pattern is the first link down below and you can use the code cottagecore until tomorrow at midnight Eastern time to get 30% off this pattern and do make sure you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on future discounts. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It's the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kian Fanolo. And yeah, I think that is everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Bye.